30 days ago, I decided to fund a Robinhood account with $100. And in today's video, we're gonna look at how much money I made or lost from this account from purely swing trading. So I hope you guys all enjoy this video. If you guys do, hit that like button. Subscribe if you guys are new to the channel, new to the team. We talk about everything money. Stocks, money management, trading, investing. So subscribe, join the team. And if you guys wanna learn how I swing trade, I just released a brand new swing trading course where we talk about my strategy, how I find stocks. It's a pretty much it's a one-stop shop for all of your swing trading needs. We have a group chat and it's honestly awesome. I'll put it down below and we are doing a Black Friday sale. So make sure you guys check that out and you guys can use code THANKFUL to get 30% off. It's only valid for this week. So make sure you go check it out. But let's dive into this. So yeah, 30 days ago, I decided to challenge myself to see how much money I could make from swing trading $100. Now, a lot of people think you need thousands of dollars or millions of dollars to trade. No, you just have to have a good strategy. And that's what we're gonna be kind of talking about in today's video. We're gonna be talking about how much money I made. We're gonna be breaking down what stocks I traded, my strategy and mindset behind them. So let's just jump into this. So what I was thinking going into it is if I could beat the S&P. Now, the reason why a lot of people like myself love to try to beat the S&P is because the S&P 500 is a stock market index. Now, this is where a lot of people invest their money. So meaning if I could beat this index, I would be better than most traders, most investors. And yes, I know it's only for a month, but I just wanted to have fun and try to push myself. And oh, guys, I did it. I turned a $100 investment into over $504. This was incredible. And obviously, anytime you start out with a small account, in my opinion, I think you have to be very, very dialed in. This isn't something where everybody can do it. You have to choose these high quality stocks rather than quantity stocks. So let's talk about some of the stocks I traded and turn to the computer. Alrighty, so like I said, one of the most important things when it comes to evaluating stocks is one, picking these quality stocks rather than quantity stocks. A lot of people have this mindset when it comes with swing trading or trading or even investing in the stock market that they have to buy everything, they have to buy as much as possible, and that, that couldn't be further from the truth. Once you guys develop a strategy, you're gonna be picking these high quality stocks that fall in tune with your strategy and they meet certain criteria. So at least when I evaluate a stock, I love to look for stocks that are on an upward trend. I think that's very, very important too. I love to find stocks that are on a support line just because those will just give me a better tendency of just getting more buying pressure, you know, a better ROI, faster returns, you know, all that stuff. So one of the trades that I took in this past month was actually on Microsoft. Now, looking at the chart, you guys will see we have had this beautiful, beautiful upward trend. For me, that's very, very important. Now, as we look at it a little more, follow this green line and look at the chart. You guys will see every time, or at least most of the time, every time it hits that green line, we get natural tendencies of just getting a lot of buying pressure involved with Microsoft. So right, it hit it once, twice, three times, four times, five times. So what I did is I understood that. I took a small trade at 325, selling near and around the resistance all the way up here at 362. This was a very, very easy support and resistance trade. Now, support is just where a stock gets buying pressure. Resistance is where it gets a lot of selling pressure. Obviously, you always wanna try to buy near support and sell, their, sell near resistance just because you'll make more money that way. Now, obviously, you guys could have done a variety of different trades on this. You know, one of the more important factors that I liked, I liked how it was a little undervalued on the RSI. I liked how it was on a support line and I liked how it had an upward trend. All that, all that stuff is very, very important for me. And it was one of the reasons I took a trade. Now, moving on to stock number two that I traded was actually on the one and only Google. Now, Google the pat in the past month has had, you know, pretty volatile month, but overall, looking at the chart, great upward trend. They did release um, an earnings report a little bit ago. Now their earnings report was actually good. They beat expectations, but they just missed it on the cloud revenue. In the grand scheme of things, that's not that big of a deal. It could be more of a short-term issue with Google. And obviously for me, I never trade you know, or hold stocks or positions uh, for a swing trade during earnings. I always buy way before or way after. Very rare will I ever trade during an earnings. So for me, I waited for the earnings to happen because if I wanted to buy it all the way up here, obviously, you know, I would I would have lost money there. 
So I waited and the stock immediately sold off down to this red line. That red line represents the 200 day moving average line. You guys will see it used it, whoa, it used it as resistance or it used it as support, excuse me, in the past, right? It hit it once, twice, three times, four times. And then recently I set an alert near and around that price. Stock sold off, hopped in at about 123, sold all the way up here, or I started selling at 134, scaling out at 130. 38. Now, the reason why I started selling at 134 instead of, you know, obviously trying to sell up here, just because there was some resistance right down in here at about 134. You guys will see it hit it several times. So one of the things that I've always done, especially with a small account, is I'm, I've never been fearful of taking profit. If I'm unsure on a trade or I just don't have the confidence or maybe I took a bad trade and I'm up by my money, I've never lost money taking profit. And that's one of the things that I couldn't, I couldn't stress more for new traders, a lot of people a lot of traders think that the stock they buy is going to go up a million percent, make them a million dollars. No. If you make a trade and maybe you're up 1%, 2%, and you're unsure, maybe you're getting a little fearful, you know, you just have a gut feeling, don't be afraid to sell it. Honestly, it's completely normal. It's completely okay. Maybe sell it and then go to your paper trading account. A lot of people are fear, fearful or they look at paper trading as like something to be ashamed of or bad. And I never think that. I think paper trading is by far the biggest thing, the biggest lesson learner. It's the biggest way to get education and experience in the market at just a affordable price because you're not using any money. It's all simulated. So I couldn't stress it enough, but Google was an absolute great trade. I'm super excited. I'm super happy um, with this one here. Just basic support and resistance for this one. Now, you might be saying, Carter, what are some positions? What are some things you always look for? So for me, a, a recent trade that I am in um, is actually on the one and only. I'm actually in a couple trades right now. I'm, I'm on one with Disney. Now, yes, yes, Disney has had that downward trend. But look, if we go to the quarterly chart, you guys will see one of the things that I loved about Disney is it's used that 90 moving average line as support several times it hit it once and it recently hit it again all the way down in here. So for me, I understood that, hopped in on that 90 moving average line, obviously it panned off very, very well. You know, if we zoom in, this past month has had a great month for Disney. Lows here at 78, all the way up to 95. It's been an absolutely beautiful run. It did go through in earnings, beating expectations, but you know, for me, I was very, very confident with this trade and I set a very, very tight stop loss, so my risk management was still on par. But uh, yes, so another trade that I'm currently in is on actually SoFi. This one here is a little risky, but it just does have some support that I like near and around $6.75, hoping to sell near and around that 200 moving average line. Um, we'll see what happens. You know, my stops are very, very tight on this one as well, so we'll see. But this is just using basic support, basic resistance to just get a general idea of starting to practice your swing trades. A lot of people get very, very overwhelmed, confused with swing trading. Try to keep it as simple as you as you can. You know, paper trade, paper trade, paper trade. Do basic, basic strategies. You don't need to look at the the MACD, RSI, the VWAP, the 290 moving average lines to make a trade. No, you don't need that. You know, just make a very, very simple strategy and start practicing. You know, start opening up that paper trading account. Start placing trades, understanding what's going on. And you guys will get there. You guys will get there. But these are some of the trades that I made to grow my small account. I hope you guys enjoyed it. So guys, I hope you guys all enjoyed this video. If you guys did, hit that like button, subscribe. Don't forget to check out my swing trading course and we'll see you guys later. Take care.